Welcome. This is Mike Fairchild, Editor-in-Chief of HRLab.com. Today we're going to be discussing Angry Birds, World of Warcraft, and Geico's Rocket Cat. In other words, gamification. And for our purposes, gamification in the human capital management space. As always, I'm joined by my colleague, Chuck Schaefer, CEO of Vantiv Media and game player extraordinaire. Welcome, Chuck. You doing all right today? I'm doing well today, Micah, although I must admit up front that my gaming skills are somewhere between Pong and Mario Brothers. <laughs> I hear you. I'm kind of partial to the old arcade games myself, like Pac-Man, but you know, before we get too far off topic or reveal just how old we are, let's, let's switch back over and start talking about what's happening with gamification in HR. This is a great topic right now because of the unique opportunity it provides, and I suspect gamification will grow in importance over the coming months and years as HR and human capital management leaders learn more about this technology. You know, agreed. I just came across a study the other day from M2 Research that estimated spending for gamification projects are going to jump from about $100 million this year to nearly $3 billion by 2016. So this is certainly a hot topic that doesn't look to be cooling down anytime soon. What do you think that's about? Why is there this sudden increase in gamification interest? In a word, engagement. Gamification in the HR world is being reviewed and adopted because it works by making what are often monotonous processes or applications more engaging. It encourages employees to participate in desired behaviors by illustrating a path to accomplishment or mastery, essentially taking advantage of people's psychological predisposition to join competitive play. When employees become more engaged, their quality of work and productivity increases. Yeah, that's a good point and so true. I think gamification taps into that human nature. We all keep score. We all compete. So why not just leverage that natural tendency and make the workplace more interesting and more engaging? That's the gamification opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're a customer or an employee. A business wants you engaged and for good reasons. Um, when it comes to employees, studies show that engaged staff are in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 percent more productive which is one of the major drivers for why we've seen so much attention being given to gamification. Companies are looking for every conceivable engagement opportunity. What's interesting to me is how this concept has extended out to so many different functional HR areas. Oh, sure. You know, you got gamification applications happening and everything from attracting and recruiting new employees to motivating and retaining old ones. It's clearly not just a training and development tool, which is, I think, what most people think. But I think learning initiatives is where gamification may be best applied in the HR world. Would you agree? Mm, to an extent, sure. But learning is such this broad category. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm thinking is that the traditional HR function of learning, you know, what most people think of as training and development, it's not the only place that gamification has seen success. In reality, there's three places where I think gamification really shines. One, you've got attraction and recruitment where companies like you know, Knack, they're using games to gauge cognitive skills. Marriott is doing the same to promote company culture and build up brand awareness. Two, you've got motivation and retention or activities like Idea Street in the UK. They're leveraging games to crowdsource company improvements and innovation. And three, of course, employee training. And you've got companies like the U.S. Department of Defense. They're using gamification already in simulated environments. I agree with you on those key functional areas in HR where gamification is working. But aren't initiatives with recruitment, attraction, and retention the areas that have seen the least play, no pun intended? I mean, those examples you cited are great, but aren't they still the exception rather than the rule? From what I've seen outside of traditional gamified learning, Organizations that are aligning gamification with other business objectives seem to be in the minority. Well, you're absolutely right about adoption rates, for sure. I wouldn't disagree that we're absent an awe-inspiring number of companies that you know, take those other areas like gamified recruitment seriously. But perhaps that low uptake is more to do with the overall idea of gamification rather than the number of success stories. What do you think? Is that the, is the lack of seriousness? misconception that these HR gamification functions face? That's a big one for sure, but if I were to highlight what I think is the biggest misunderstanding about gamification in the HR world, it would have to be the perception that this is a passing fad, which I don't think could be further from the truth. 
While well, gamification has yet to cross a chasm to reach mainstream adoption, a cursory review of the landscape shows a significant gamification movement. Gartner is predicting that by 2015, 70% of the Global 2000 will have at least one gamified app. Recent acquisitions like Salesforce.com's purchase of Ripple have been built around gamification in an effort to introduce new life into stale processes like employee performance. And larger vendors such as SAP have started to pilot gamification apps and platforms, which is a clear sign that these initiatives are not solely limited to small or emerging growth companies. Now, with all that said, I think that the greater adoption rates and proof that gamification is not a fad will largely revolve around vendors incorporating gamified apps into other enterprise applications rather than simple standalone applications. Agreed. But let's say that those deeper integrations do occur. Uh, are there any specific points you think our, view our viewers considering an HR gamification strategy should, should recognize or think about? Well, aside from what we've already discussed, there were some good Gartner research points that just came out identifying four main factors that ultimately affect how successful a gamification strategy or application will be. The first is feedback. If you want to be effective with workplace gaming, you have to build in a rapid feedback mechanism that allows desired behaviors to be recognized immediately. Otherwise, you run the risk of diluting the whole point of the game in the first place, which is, of course, engagement. The second factor is rules. Gamification can't be successful without having specific goals attached to the game. Are you going to give away points or badges or some other kind of reward? Whatever the specifics are, they need to be clearly defined and have a clear destination to empower the participants to achieve their rewards. The third factor is interaction. This is one of the most overlooked aspects that I've seen organizations forget. You must have a compelling narrative to encourage interaction and keep users interested. This isn't just about an enticing interface. It's about the game itself. If your users aren't engaged with the activity, the chances are they won't be engaged with the topic or objective the game is to promote. And finally, the fourth factor is results. One of my favorite aspects of the SMART goal acronym is the letter A, which stands for achievable. It simply means that whatever goals have been set must be realizable. You want progress to occur, but you won't be able to achieve this if the end game goals are too high or too low. Organizations should position short-term objectives that are challenging but obtainable. Well, Chuck, excellent thoughts as always. And that actually brings us to a good stopping point for this discussion. Thanks for joining us in our conversation about HR technologies. And be sure to tune in next time as we'll be looking at the role that mobile applications are playing in the HCM industry.